This is Ken Rockwell with KenRockwell.com and KenRockwell.tv. Thanks for watching today. We're going to cover a quick review of some of my thoughts about the Nikon Z6 and Z7, which are actually the same camera. The only difference is a huge difference in price and a small difference in resolution, which ultimately no one really needs. Um, who am I? <laughs> I've been shooting continuously for over 50 years, starting since I was a little kid. I've been the world's largest source of photography and Nikon information specifically since I started my website, KenRockwell.com, in 1999, where I get somewhere around a million unique, different viewers every single month on that website for decades. More importantly, I've been shooting Nikon since I bought my very first one back in 1983. And that's the view of experience for a guy who shoots every single day. So I'm less concerned about laboratory performance and more concerned about how can I make a great picture. Some things about the Nikon Z7. Yes, technically the Z7 and Z6 are unmatched. Well, okay, you can match them. The Canon system is just as good. But honestly, the colors I get from them are superb. The resolution is excellent. But that doesn't necessarily make a great picture. What makes a great picture is being able to get into the settings you need and make those settings to get your shot and not lose them because you're futzing with something that the camera botched. Let's take a look at some of the pictures that I can make with this camera. These are Christmas lights. This is simply shot out of a window of, well, it wasn't a moving car. I slowed down a little bit. Or actually, I was in the passenger seat. The point is, it's one eighth of a second at ISO 500, and I made this with a 24 to 70 millimeter f/4 zoom at 24 millimeters wide open at f/4 at ISO 500. Looks just great. What I love about the Z7 and the Z6, which again are the same camera, take exactly the same pictures, is that the colors look fantastic. I can get these colors also out of Canon. But Sony just doesn't get these for me. Fuji doesn't get these for me. These wild colors, and this is a drive-by photograph handheld at one-eighth of a second, I can't get with other cameras. Does it work well at night? Oh, yeah. Here's a shot. <laughs> Admittedly on a tripod at 30 seconds. 28 millimeter setting. Again, the cheap 24 to 70 millimeter f4 zoom set to 28 millimeters. Looks great. Hopefully you're enjoying this video on true 4K high definition ultra because this camera has even far more definition than I can show on 4K television. Here's another shot of a mortician's workshop. Shot handheld at a quarter of a second, admittedly braced against the window, at ISO 64, again with a 24 to 70 millimeter f4 lens. No limit to what this camera can do. The only limitation, like anything in the United States of America, is your imagination, not the equipment. Here's another shot, completely free handheld at one sixth of a second, wide open at f4, at 24 millimeters at ISO 200, just walking down the street. Looks pretty sharp to me. Colors, I'm all about colors, and I love the colors that I can get with this camera. Here's another shot, handheld at a 13th of a second at ISO 200 with the same zoom lens. Oh my gosh, did I say color? Here's a shot from Yosemite Valley. F4, handheld at a 200th while we had daylight. Super sharp, ultra sharp, ultra colorful. I just love it. So there's no question to what this camera can do, but that's not just the camera. Admittedly, I could do this with any camera. Although I wouldn't get the colors as clearly and as cleanly if I had used something like Sony. Some general thoughts about the Nikon Z camera. I don't know that I would recommend anybody actually buy this. I personally prefer the Canon EOS RP because it handles better. But why is that? Well, the first thing that I hate the most about this camera <laughs> is the memory cards. It doesn't use the standard memory cards. It uses these cockamamie Sony XQD cards, which I hate. Why do I hate them? Because they cost about $100 a piece, give or take. And on top of that, you'll notice it's a rectangle. Which way does it go in? Does it go in like this? No. There's eight ways you can put this into the camera, only one of which actually works. Do you think you're ever going to see an arrow here? No, not when you're actually using this. Regular SD cards are smaller, thinner. And guess what? Nikon claims, oh, you don't lose files or you don't lose, have errors with these? No. People have errors with the XQD cards the same. Only takes one card. Sorry about that. Where is it made? Let's take a look here. It is made in Japan. Thank goodness. Most of the other stuff they make elsewhere. It's got a good viewfinder. There's no question about that. This ring, unfortunately, requires two fingers to operate. You can't just turn it with one. If you're really clever, you can push it like this, but it has a lock here, and that's difficult. These U1, U2, and U3 settings, I love these kinds of settings because I always set U1 for places and things. 
U2 for people, U3 for action. The problem is the design flaw on these Nikon cameras, or specifically the Z cameras, is these settings only recall two-thirds of what you actually need. It doesn't recall most of what's in the setup menu. So certain things that are actually important to my picture, it won't cover. And oh, by the way, if you want to know all the details, this is mostly for fun here at YouTube. If you go to my website, KenRockwell.com, and the specific link is down in the description, I can take you to my knockdown, drag out, explicit review, which covers everything in more detail than anybody could ever possibly want to know. If you want to shoot manual focus lenses with a Nikon, shoot one of the single lens reflexes like the D850. It does fantastic because everything is coupled and properly metered even with the manual focus lenses. If you're shooting with an f1.4 lens, you can get perfect focus accuracy and not have any of the occasional inaccuracies or need to set focus shifts. The camera will work completely silently if you want to set it that. It's got a great finder, uh, but all of these cameras are great finders. The problem is that the finder has automatic brightness control, but it's not very good automatic brightness control. So, for instance, if you're shooting with a manual focus lens at a small aperture, it sets its brightness only based on the light coming through the lens. So, in that case, shooting a manual focus lens on an adapter at a small aperture means the finder is always too darn dim. It's just not as smart as the Sony cameras, which have excellent automatic brightness control through their viewfinders. The FTZ lens mount adapter is a dud. Why? Well, the longer you've been shooting Nikon, as I said, I've been shooting it every day since 1983, is that your older lenses are not compatible. Nikon lies. Yes, they'll mount and they'll take a picture, but the older autofocus lenses will not autofocus. And guess what? Nikon still sells these lenses. Last I looked, I think about three out of every ten of the items on Nikon's current list of lenses will not autofocus with the new adapter, which is really sad because Nikon got cheap and didn't bother to include the autofocus motor in the FTZ adapter, which was required to make their older autofocus lenses autofocus. So because of that, if you're thinking you're going to buy this Z and just use all of your older lenses, no. If you're a newcomer and all of your lenses are the newer AFS lenses, that's great because they'll work just fine on the adapter, the FTZ adapter. But if you're an old-timer like me that's been shooting forever, no, half your lenses are done. In which case, you should say, gee, well, there's really no advantage to buying a Nikon camera because my lenses aren't going to work and I'm going to wind up buying new ones anyway. And so by the time you buy six new lenses for the Nikon Z system, which unfortunately is only a very limited number of dedicated Z lenses, you're going to say, wow, I could have updated to Canon or gone to Sony. So I'd recommend just going to Canon if you're going to go mirrorless full frame, unless you just happen to have those lenses you like. But as I said, these settings here, they bug me. The fact that the Canon cameras with C1, C2, and C3 recall everything I need, this one doesn't. For me, the problem is, is every time I change from shooting a landscape or photographing a person, there's more settings I have to make on the side. What is good is full-frame autofocus. You don't get that in digital single-lens reflexes. Like most mirrorless cameras, you can focus out to the edges. It'll work completely silently if you want. This offers 4x5, square 1 to 1, and 16x9 crops. The only difference if the Z6 is the Z6, I believe, won't do the 1 to 1 crop. But check my website for that. It's got a great time exposure mode. It's got the usual Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, even offers multiple exposures. It uses the regular ENEL15 batteries from the DSLRs that most of us have a, a huge collection of. Additionally, this newer one will actually charge in camera, and that's a huge benefit. You can charge in camera... Oh, by the way, these covers are crappy. They're crappy plastic, and eventually with time, they're going to fall off. That's too bad. You can charge by USB-C, and it charges really fast, and that works really well. In fact, that's the way I recommend you charge it. You can use a USB-C cable and charge from any USB source, including the plug in your car or wherever. Or you can charge the batteries, and I don't do this. Nikon includes a charger, which is very nice of them. I hate this charger. Why? Well, look at this. A good charger, like what Canon offers usually, or Nikon's point-and-shoots offer, is a little flipping plug, and you're good to go. Throw this in your luggage or your bag, you're good to go. No, with this, you've got this idiotic plug, which lets them sell this in numerous countries. But now, uh, are you kidding me? I'm not going to put this in my bag this way. It's going to break off. This is horrible. Or you could just carry another cord. Do I want to carry another cord with all my gear? No. So I hate this charger, but that's okay because I don't have to use this charger. I can just charge by USB, which is how I do it. The flash system is fully compatible with Nikon's DSLRs. So your existing flashes work great. My favorite is my SB400 from 2006. It's a tiny flash. It works great. It's the flash you want. You can't get them new, but go to my website, and there's plenty of links to where you can buy plenty of them used inexpensively. Another problem with this camera, at least as of version 2, face recognition doesn't work very well. Yes, if there's one face, it works great. There's eye recognition. But if you actually shoot all day, when you're photographing a group, you'll discover you've got a group of people. It doesn't know which face to get, which is really sad. My iPhone does a much better job. All the other brands of camera do a better job if you have a numerous bunch of people. 
It'll find the closest face or the most relevant face. And in fact, even as the most relevant face turns away, it'll find the next most relevant face. Other cameras are brilliant. No. With these cameras, I hate them. <laughs> I hate my Zs for photographing groups of people because it randomly finds a random face. Now, you can click left and right over here to select the right face. But guess what? By the time you've done that, you've lost your picture. That's bad. Very low light autofocus isn't all that great. It's kind of like the D610 and D600 fiasco that didn't work well in low light. The viewfinder doesn't work that well in the light. If you shoot all day like I do, you'll notice that compared to other cameras, the viewfinder gets noisy in low light as opposed to the Canon EOS R system that stays better. That's a minor thing. Back to this, you know, am I harping on this? Yes, because when you shoot all day, this bugs me. What these forget about is it doesn't recall most of the setup menu options, like display brightness, the advanced mode, and the image crop modes. Those don't get recalled. I have to reset those manually from one kind of shot to the next, and I do reset those. And guess what? That takes me time, which loses me pictures. It's great that there's a save everything to the card function, and on my website, I even share my settings, so you can download exactly the same settings that I use. The problem with that is, it's defective in design. It doesn't recall your settings for U1, U2, and U3, which means that it's only a half useful feature. That is better than Canon or Sony for the most part who don't offer any way to save the camera setups to your card. But the bad thing is it doesn't really work. I hate that. Here's another thing. People say, gee, Ken, should I buy the 850 or get this? Here's the thing. The D850 is the product of over 60 years of continuous advancement in single lens reflex cameras. Nikon's been doing single lens reflexes since 1959, and the D850 uses exactly the same lens mount and has everything they've ever learned and has essentially the same sensor and the same image quality, both of which are state of the art. The problem is that the Z6 and Z7 are the very first ever cameras from Nikon that are mirrorless full frame. I'm very impressed that they work as well as they do. Autofocus is pretty fast. The cameras pretty much work without a hiccup. They don't crash. That's good. But the sad thing is they're the first generation. There's these flaws with these sorts of things, things that bug me. That's not good. Some things that are missing. While this will track autofocus at 9 frames per second, it locks exposure at 9 frames per second. There's no built-in flash. Excuse me. There's no second card slot. As a guy who shoots for a living, I can't afford to lose my shots. So it's not a professional camera if it doesn't have a second card slot. I'm sorry. There's no automatic brightness control for the rear LCD. My iPhone does that. I mean, come on. My iPhone can do that. I wish my camera could do that. The only camera that really does that are Canons. My 5DSR Canon does that great. There's no AFA mode, which automatically selects the kinds of autofocus. There's no GPS. There's no voice notes. But hey, it's not a pro camera. Well, the Nikon sells it as if it was a pro camera today because it's the only one they've got. But the future will hold more professional level cameras that are mirrorless. Actually, there is no professional really mirrorless camera. Sony makes an A9, which is fantastic, but it doesn't have a voice recorder. So <laughs> there you go. The lens mount... Gee, I should cover this. This is the first Z camera. Notice how close the sensor is to the mount. So you can pretty much adapt any camera lens you want to this mount. Construction quality. You know, there is a decent balance of metal and plastic. It's not all that comfortable. This knob is square. It is not anywhere near as comfortable as Nikon's SLRs with rubberized or soft control dials. This is cheap plastic. This is metal, which is nice, but it's not comfortable. This is metal, which is nice. It's not comfortable. Most of the camera body's plastic. The buttons are all plastic. This viewfinder frame is plastic. The bottom, this is metal. This is fall apart plastic. This is actually designed to come off. I think it's designed so you won't break it off and it'll just pop off and you'll laugh. It is nice. The rubberized grip is about the same as what we get on other Nikon cameras. And also what's nice is it is well ergonomically designed. So my big American hands fit on this camera pretty well and are certainly much more comfortable than Sony. I'll admit Sony is horrible for ergonomics. They're the worst because everything is square. There's nothing curved. It's designed by somebody who really didn't bother to design it. They designed it so maybe it looks okay. But you'll notice everything is in an angle. Even this is in an angle here. This is good. These buttons all feel different by feel. This one sticks. Can you see this? This button sticks out more than these do. So as you're shooting, you can usually feel where these go. Another design flaw is that the play button's all the way over here. So you need a second hand to go reach over to the play. A lot of this is programmable like every other camera. But they have menu here. This shows it's a camera for hackers who are always setting their menus from shot to shot as opposed to people that want to play it and actually see what they shot. The problem with the menu system is it's all one color. Although notice you have, well, this is all the same color here. You'll notice this one thin hairline changes color. When you're actually in your menus, notice everything's highlighted in yellow. That's too bad. I much prefer Canon where everything's highlighted in a different color 
You can see, okay, we have some colors here, but guess what? When you're actually in here, they're still all yellow. That's the problem. When I try to think back to where was autofocus, auto AF area select, you know, volume sensitivity set, uh, there's no real way to remember that. That's just a... That's just one thing. You know, if you want to compare Sony versus Canon versus Nikon, take a look. Look at my links in the description, and I have a link to my knockdown, drag out, online, complete comparison of every possible detail of Nikon versus Canon versus Sony. Image stabilization. The image stabilization works very well. I get several stops of improvement, even with manual focus lenses. The top display. The top display is really good. It's actually visible at almost every light. The only problem is in broad daylight, it's not that visible because it can only go so bright. But overall, this top display is good. I would much rather have a dedicated dial for exposure compensation, but too bad. Nikon doesn't ask Americans for what they want. Playback. One design flaw of the playback system of this Nikon, as well as most Nikons recently, is when you play back and have a blue sky, they don't use enough bits in generating the signal that's sent to the viewfinder or to the rear LCD. So you will get some banding in the blue. It's not in your picture, don't worry. And as soon as you zoom in, it goes away, but don't let that bug you. Power and battery. Battery life is very good, and most importantly, the battery management of power is excellent. I think it's probably the best in the mirrorless world because you can leave the power switch on all day long, and the camera just goes to sleep as it should and wakes up as it should, so that is a marvelous thing. I get about 450 shots per charge if I'm looking at every picture after I shoot it. On the other hand, I'll get 1,000 shots or more per charge if I'm actually just blasting away and not looking. And that's it. I have said more than enough. This camera has fantastic technical quality, so if you want the best technical quality images, by all means, get it. If you have a collection of recent Nikon lenses, which means AFS lenses, by all means, consider the FTZ adapter, and you're good to go. If you're starting from scratch, which I caution, we're all kind of starting from scratch because Nikon's lens line available for this camera is relatively limited, do consider other brands. Sony is the most popular today. And that's because it has the highest level of technical advancements in terms of autofocus and in terms of <laughs> frame rates. However, I don't like the color rendition, meaning the look of the pictures as much as I get from my Nikons. I can't get the vivid colors right out of the cameras that I do on Sony as I do from my Nikons. Personally, my money is on Canon. I prefer the EUS R and EUS RP, which also cost less money. I find the ergonomics are superior. The color rendition is equally superior. And to me, ergonomics are everything, because when you get out every day and shoot, as opposed to just sit around and talk about it, by all means, I prefer the results I get from Canon because the cameras handle better. My brain hurts less. If there's ever a question, call 1-800-OK-CANON. OK the first person that picks up the phone usually knows my answer right off the top of their head. When I call Nikon for customer support, I don't usually get the answers I need, and certainly not immediately. So that's it. As I said, please read the online detailed review. But that's some of my basic thoughts about the Nikon Z7 and Z6 mirrorless digital full-frame cameras. Thanks again for watching Ken Rockwell, kenrockwell.com, and kenrockwell.tv.